Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's 1.30. Thank you so much for joining us, especially for those of you that came on earlier. Um, I have a guest with us today that never refuses to join us, whether it is uh, the kidney chat or just answering questions that we have. And her name is Jessiana Seville, RD, CSR, LDN. She is the founder and owner of Kidney Nutrition Institute a collective of expert renal dietitians that focus on advanced renal nutrition strategies for CKD and PKD, as well as resource development for organizations and dietitians. She is also the founder of Renalar, a nonprofit that advocates for nutrition as a first line therapy for kidney disease through the Renal Life and Renew program. She was the 2020 NKF Renal Dietitian of the Year and has helped pioneer and publish on plant-focused ketogenic diets as well as value-based care nutrition. Her organizations have worked hard to advance education of patients and professionals through developing group programs and advanced training on every aspect of renal nutrition. She loves speaking about renal nutrition and quality patient education every chance she gets and has trained and spoken to groups throughout the world. Outside of renal nutrition, she loves trying new ethnic cuisines, learning anything new and unusual, reading children's books out loud with fun accents, and mostly unsuccessfully trying to grow a garden. Along for the ride with Jessiana are her three children and husband, two mischievous kittens, and six friendly backyard chickens. <laughs> we have gone over her professional side as well as her fun side. And Jessiana, as always, I can't tell you how welcome you are to join us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And this is the time of year when renal patients have their most challenges the holidays we want sweet potatoes we want stuffing we want mashed potatoes we want everything that is all about thanksgiving and you were gracious enough to send a thanksgiving handout the do's and don'ts of what to do on Thanksgiving, as well as any other holidays. And even if people don't celebrate the holidays, they're still exposed to a lot of food during this holiday time. So Jessiana, welcome, welcome, welcome. And you can have the floor and go over your kidney friendly Thanksgiving. And I love the name of it. It says feast instead of fear. And that's a great thing for us to remember. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. I hope the sound is okay. I couldn't find my earbuds. So I'm just using the audio on my phone. It's okay. It's, so okay. it's okay. fine. Good. I hope it's okay. Um, but yes, I don't have a visual of the handout. So I'm on my phone. If I was on my computer, I would pull it up. Um, but maybe something you can send out. There's a couple key principles when it comes to the holidays for everybody. This is not just dialysis patients, but I think that uh, there can potentially be some catastrophic problems if you get way overboard during the holidays if you're on dialysis. And so that's, you know, it's good to know about those. But number one, which I think is really, really important. The holidays are a time for us to socialize and celebrate, and if possible, to be with our friends and our family or with other people. And uh, there tends to be kind of this push and pull for a lot of people. They're like, I wanna be with people, but I don't wanna navigate all those awkward yeah. conversations about why I'm not having that, why I'm not having that, why I'm not having that. And uh, I think, there's a couple ways you can smooth that over so it doesn't end up being such a burdensome uh, time. Is, num is just number one is doing just a little bit of planning ahead of time, game planning with your dietitian at your unit. And what that can mean is once you know what the portion size is of what you're going to eat, it is pretty 
easy to probably fit almost everything in that you want to eat. And then you don't even have to have awkward conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, there's, there is only one food really that we consider toxic and that is star fruit for dialysis. But other than that, the rest of the foods, it's really dependent on your portion size. And so if you can have a game plan ahead of time and that you know yourself and you know you can be moderate with your portion size of some particular foods, you don't have to worry about those conversations. Um, and the other thing, I'll just, this is just a, a catchphrase that I use that I coach my patients on, is that oftentimes if people want to go socialize and they know that they're kind of an all or nothing, you know, if they have that one chocolate chip cookie, they're gonna eat 10. Um, so they're like, I just don't even wanna like touch it. I tell them to tell people around them if they ask to just say hey i love that food but it doesn't like me and mm -hmm. it's enough of tongue in cheek but cheek and a little bit of humor that you can bypass a lot of uh awkward conversations mm -hmm. and uh, people generally are way more understanding than you think so all of that being said i don't have the handout in front of me well, you know, I can I can, tell, I can tell you a few yeah, key factors. I remember it in my head, I but like I printed I printed it. I printed it so that I could refer okay. to it. Yeah. But you had said one. Some of the things you know, I like to concentrate on what you can eat Perfect. and what you cannot eat. Yes. Because I think that makes you a happier camper. Yep. And one of the things that I saw was um, make your own uh, dressing. Some people call it stuffing. Make your own instead of using a box. I think you're cutting the sodium. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. one of the principles here is that oh, when you're on dialysis, probably, in my opinion, the number one danger that people can have over the holidays is getting fluid overloaded. Mm -hmm. And fluid overload is more about how much salt you eat than how much how much fluid you drink because salt drives thirst. Mm -hmm. So for anything like the dressing, the turkey, the, I mean, there's so many salty dishes. There's a mac and cheese. For these type of dishes, if you can avoid the boxed one and make it from scratch, which a lot of times is a lot easier than we think. Mm -hmm. but if you can make it from scratch, you're going to cut down massively on A, the number the amount of sodium and B, you're going to cut down a lot on the preservatives as well. So I think that is huge, right? So if mm -hmm. you have a favorite food at Thanksgiving, it's if you could do a little footwork and uh, find a way where you can prep it yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. And then, well, that's a perfect segue because you said easy ways to cut sodium was low sodium broth, unsalted butter, herbs and stuff of salt herbs such like sage thyme rosemary make gravy from the drippings instead of that mix or that can that little powder stuff you find in a packet that's mm -hmm. full of sodium yeah marinate the main dish instead of brining and use small amounts of vinegar or lemon juice to perk up flavors without adding salt I think these are key factors. And, you know, recently I talked to a patient and she was so disturbed and stopped eating because she couldn't add salt anymore. And it really, really affected her mentally. And I told her that she really needs to talk to her dietitian or nutrition to find out what she can do in place of the salt, because of course she was losing weight because she didn't want to eat anymore. Yeah. So I think this, this, I mean, so salt seems to be a real big factor with a lot of people. And we all know when we eat salty things, we get thirsty. And that's a no no for a, a, a dialysis patient or anybody, really. I think too much salt can really affect most people, yeah, whether they're healthy or not, you know. Yeah, it absolutely can. And remember, there's a couple principles here is we always say no sodium is not better than low sodium. So low mm -hmm. sodium is one thing. There's some foods where you need a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And if you're cooking from scratch, if you are really honing in on, um, you know, where the salt's coming from, you usually have a lot more wiggle room than you think to add it into a few 
foods that really, really need it. Mm -hmm. um, the other, the other principle of that is also that your taste buds really can adjust to that, to whatever sodium you're used to. And so after cutting back a little bit on salt over time, you will find that you don't need as much anyways. Right. Um, and so, yeah, those are definitely some mm -hmm. awesome questions. And the acidic flavors, lemon, lime, mm -hmm. vinegar, uh, or spicy flavors, you know, mm -hmm. hot sauce, uh, sriracha, jalapenos, those flavors really help so you don't need quite as much salt, especially mm -hmm. like those tangy flavors. Like one of the things at Thanksgiving that people really miss is a tang, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like, what do we have? Cranberry sauce, that's the only really tangy thing we have. So right. yeah, those, those are definitely some, some good things that you can do. Right, and you know, Jessiana, what you just said made a lot of sense because I, I have very little salt in my diet. And if I taste something with salt in it, it tastes more salty than ever before. Yeah. And that's when you know that you, you know, you really don't miss salt once you start cooking with herbs and different things like that. And especially if you do butter, the unsalted butter can be just as good yep. once you add the herbs. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. And then um, you talked about snacks. A lot of people snack. Everybody has hors d'oeuvres at the holiday. And you recommended deviled eggs, cream cheese with low sodium crackers, a relish tray of carrot, cucumber, broccoli, peppers, radishes, celery with dip, uh, low sodium popcorn. Um, we recently had a fly-in, and that was one of the things that I that you agreed with me, low-sodium popcorn, to give to the renal patients when they wanted a snack. Because everybody wants a snack. Sometimes you just want that crunch. Just want and, uh, you know, and, and popcorn does do it. Uh, low-sodium pretzels, uh, a fruit tray of strawberries, blueberries, grapes, clementines, and pineapple. Now, one of the things... Um, that I've noticed when I talk to dialysis patients that are diabetics, the grapes seem to really spike their glucose. The grapes, and sometimes um, uh, other fruits as well can do that, like bananas. What do you recommend about those? Uh, I mean, the number one principle is know thyself. So if you already know that there's some foods that are gonna really impact your blood sugars, and again, you shoot your blood sugars way up during the holiday holidays, you're going to drive your thirst. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you come in, you know, the next win, that's dialysis treatment, you have so much fluid, which taking off all that fluid at dialysis is really hard, right? It's hard on the body, you feel awful afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, managing that's so important, but you know, it depends on the person. So if some of the fruits, you know, really spike your blood sugars, I would just leave them out mm -hmm. because in the situation, especially of a snack where it's not part of a meal necessarily, you don't have the fat and fiber and mm -hmm. these other things to manage that, that blood sugar, then I would just leave it out and bring something that you know you like mm -hmm. and that you can look forward to, but it's not going to negatively impact you. And again, this is different for every single person. Some people might be like, like I love deviled eggs. Deviled eggs would be awesome. Like I'm so looking forward to that. We don't make them a lot, so I'm gonna make it for the holidays. As long as like your blood sugar, great source of protein, and like you can really look forward to it, they look fancy, then that's great. But maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you hate eggs. <laughs> and so yeah. you would look at something else. You know, what else do you look for? Maybe some people like meatballs. Maybe some people like, you know, I don't know. There's a million different appetizers out there. If you talk with your dietitian, you can figure out, you know, what do I really like? How could I modify it? And, you know, what else could I do to really help so that it's, um, I don't have to feel so worried about right. it. Well. Right. Jessiana, a hypothetical question, and I know you said to thine own self be true. What would you recommend a good snack for a hypertensive diabetic dialysis patient? So, I mean, do you mean during the holidays? Uh in general uh, just uh, holidays anytime you know a, a snack that would be healthy and satisfying if you, you know that you're struggling in a hypertensive meaning they're having high blood pressure so if you know that you tend to struggle with your blood pressure 
a little bit, then of course you're gonna to wanna to watch the salt mm -hmm. um, and the sugar intake. But I mean, I always, whenever we can fit in that fresh produce, mm -hmm. because that is so, so powerful. So maybe it's carrots and hummus. That's a one that a lot of people like. Maybe uh, it's apple with peanut butter on it. That's another one a lot of people really like. Um, but I would fit in some sort of a fresh produce. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately when it comes to the high blood pressure, oh, sorry, my phone just fell. <laughs> um, when it comes to high blood pressure, it's really about your overall day and you can definitely, you know, do some damage if you're grabbing a handful of chips here and you're grabbing, you know, a couple chicken wings there and you're, you know, like you're grabbing all these salty snacks throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if that's not really the case for you, then, you know, just overall, you're trying to get in more of that produce and the fiber. And that's really, really powerful. Great. Now, also in your ha handout, you said, um, as far as your main dishes go, get some protein. And you have turkey and you put, of course, uh, pork, chicken, Cornish game hens, mm -hmm. duck or goose, and prime rib if you're lucky. <laughs> you gotta have the right friends for that one. Right, right. So I know the protein is important. And yesterday on, uh, we had our doctor live on Instagram and a person asked, can a person get too much protein? And she said, of course. So what would be the limitations on the protein? Ah, that's a good question. So if you're, I mean, again, it fits within your overall day, right? So if you're gonna sit down and you kind of eat in light the rest of the day, you can have a bigger portion. I feel like this question is so much about, you know, like being wise on your plate. So if you're loading it up you know, with turkey and then you're going back for three or four servings, I'm not even sure the problem there is protein because a lot of protein in one day, I'm like I'm not sure that's the biggest problem. The bigger problem is the quantity of food. Like if you eat such a big food and you actually like are stuffed, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be thirsty as gonna be so much salt. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think if you think of your plate, like just be reasonable, right? If you will eat until you feel like you're not hungry anymore, then you're okay, right? Sometimes we think, oh, Thanksgiving, we only get these foods once a year, so I'm gonna eat more stuff. Mm -hmm. Not not good, you don't feel good. It's not, it's just like, it's not a good practice no matter who we are. You will never get too much if you just look at your plate. I mean, maybe think of it if you want to. In a third, right, or a quarter of your plate, that's your protein. Half is your produce and a quarter is your starch. Mm -hmm. So, that, that's, um, that's good. That's good suggestion. Very good suggestion. Yeah. As I said, that the holidays can be very challenging, not just for uh, renal patients, but for all people, whether you're sick or not. And I think um, a lot of it is about discipline. A lot of it is because when you when you pig out, you don't feel good afterwards. I mean, you just don't. No. So, um, and especially um, since you have to watch fluids, since you can get fluids by not even drinking. So we have to be very careful. And as you put on your handout, you said, remember, fluids can add up. And some of your uh, suggestions were lemon lime soda, ginger ale, sparkling water, iced tea, coffee, apple cider, sparkling cider, and cranberry juice. And of course, again, if you're a diabetic, you have to watch the the, uh, the sugar in some of these drinks. And I find that, you know, it, it might be better for some patients just to drink water. Yeah. And, you know, you hear people say, I don't like water. Well, you might have to really like water if, if you want to stay healthy. What is your take on that? So... I mean, the thing is, is that drinking can be so social at holidays, right? Like you have a drink, you have a drink at the table, you have a drink while you're talking, you have a drink while you sit down mm -hmm. and watch the movie. Like mm -hmm. having something to drink is such a social activity. And it's right, it can totally add up. And then by the end of the day, next day you're going in for dialysis, or maybe, you know, Thanksgiving's always on Thursday. Maybe you're not going to wait till Saturday. Right. And you have so much food, you have to get off. So again, I think it's partially you need to know yourself 
So if you, you already know where your fluid limits are. If you don't, it's a very important discussion to have with your dietitian because mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. still pee quite a bit and they don't need as much of a fluid restriction. Other people don't urinate at all and they know they have to be mindful of how much fluid they drink. Mm -hmm. So once you know where your limit is, then you want to consider, you know what, again, what's your game plan? So if you're going to have, you know, a glass of soda or they have a special punch there or whatever, how much are you going to drink? You're going to drink it the whole time. Maybe you have a cup and you fill it with ice and you only plan to have two. But again, I just feel like it's that game plan, mm -hmm. knowing where your where your weakness is. And if it is like that you're just going to drink the whole time or you know they're going to have alcohol and if you have one drink, you're going to have 10, then again, just know yourself and where your limits are. That is being a wise steward of your body and it's just be wise for yourself, right? I mean, yeah. you're, you're an adult, and that's what you do as an adult, is you find the things that you can manage so you can feel your best. Right, and and that that's, that's good advice. And, you know, mentally, sometimes you can absorb that because food is a comfort for many people. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're told that you can't have this and you can't have that, you're going to dialysis three times a week, da 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 life challenges, um, you really have to have good discipline. And this is why we have people like you to tell us what we can eat, what we cannot eat. And we just have to focus on how good do we want to feel? How long do we want to live? And the diet is a large part of that. Yeah. Jessiana, you are invaluable. Thank you so much for agreeing to join in your busy schedule. We had things where we had to go back and forth. And I just wanted to make sure that we could connect uh, because it's so important for people to attend these lives and get this information because you have just been a real asset to dialysis patients, citizens. And for that, we are so grateful. Um, I know that you have prepared a dish ahead of time. Well, and I show you the ingredients in the dish <laughs> so, and talk with you about it. I didn't prepare it. We've had a crazy week, but I do want to share with you uh, okay. a couple ideas and things that are brought in from my kitchen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So um, if we're ready to go there, one of the foods during the holidays that a lot of people, it's very nostalgic. They love it. I mean, yesterday was two days ago was Halloween. We have all these pumpkins. It's pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. so like the pumpkin muffins, the pumpkin pie, the pumpkin cookies, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Um, so um, anyways, pumpkin is quite high in potassium and mm -hmm. maybe for you that's fine. Maybe you don't have a potassium restriction and if so, you can disregard everything I'm going to say. But a lot of people are, um, a lot of people are on a, um, are watching their potassium. So one of the easiest substitutes you can use, and this works for pumpkin pie, pumpkin cookies, pumpkin everything, is using a spaghetti squash, okay? There's a bunch of squashes that they have in the store, and I just wanted to highlight these real quick. Uh, so you have acorn squash, which is the big green one, and butternut squash, which is the peach one, peach orangey one, um, and then you have spaghetti squash, which is yellow. So of all of those, your spaghetti squash is your lowest in potassium. And if you've never cooked with squash, it can be intimidating. So I'm going to tell you a few tricks. But I have made pumpkin pie many times. When I worked in a dialysis unit every Thanksgiving, I would make pumpkin pie from spaghetti squash. Not for the whole unit, because so it wouldn't let me do that. But I would bring it in to our doctor and our nurses for our quality meeting and make sure they try it. <laughs> okay. but, so you can use spaghetti squash. There's a couple tricks to these uh, squashes. They're actually quite, and I'm not gonna be able to show you this because of my, where my camera is, but they're quite hard. So a lot of people, especially if like you're, you don't have a lot of strength in your hands or whatever, they can be really hard to cut. But if you will just, you can poke it with a knife or a fork and um, you can put it on a plate with a little bit of water and you can microwave it for 10 minutes or so. It'll soften up the shell so that then you can cut it. And then it's just like carving a pumpkin. You scoop out the seeds inside and you can roast it in the oven. Let me just show you real quick. Okay. There you go. This will 
one's so hard to cut. Mm -hmm. So you can either hook it like this. I cover mine with a plastic wrap. I put water at the bottom, then I just microwave it. Um, but you can, or you can put it on a baking tray and put it in. Um, I usually, when it's done cooking, I'll scoop out the inside and then the flesh, it's called spaghetti squash because you'll see the mm -hmm. flesh is real string. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll string out. You put it in a food processor or blender and it will just blend up so nicely. And you have a puree that you can use in substitute for pumpkin pie. So that's one tip for all the pumpkin products. The other tip on your pumpkin products is really the flavor comes from this. It comes from the pumpkin pie spice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually come from the pumpkin. Pumpkin cookies, pumpkin everything. Really, the pumpkin pie spice is that nostalgic flavor that most people really like, pumpkin pie, etc. So if you have some pumpkin pie spice, you can even use applesauce sometimes as a substitute. A little bit more carby for diabetics than using a squash, but that's what you would use. Um, the other ingredient that can catch people on pumpkin pie is the milk. A lot of times it will call for evaporated milk um, or just regular milk in the recipe. Milk, of course, is a pretty rich source of phosphorus. Mm -hmm. So what we'll generally have our patients do is just replace it with like an almond milk oh, or something. Okay. And that works fine. So you do your puree, right? You do your eggs. Usually there's some eggs in it, which are great. Um, and then you do your almond milk and then the sugar and the um, vanilla. That's what you can do to make a really good pumpkin pie filling. Put it in your favorite crust, bake it, and you have something that you could take or pumpkin cookies or whatever. So that's what I wanted to share with you as a little recipe highlight if you're looking to modify something is use the magic of the spaghetti squash because it works so good. So wow. good. Just as the others that's a good tip that's a real good tip so the flavor is all in that little jar of pumpkin spice this is the flavor we know like we always think it's the pumpkin right so we gotta get pumpkin we have pumpkin mm -hmm. food but really this is the flavor that okay. this is what we this is what we really are nostalgic about is that ginger cinnamon all spice clove like all these like really beautiful flavors that's what we at the holidays mm -hmm. if you love pumpkin pie spice mm -hmm. that's really what we're what we're hankering for well i know you sent it in your handout and i can't remember if we have it in our recipes that you send us pumpkin free pumpkin pie that's but um yep and i'll send i can send that over and again it's just based okay. on okay and we'll and yeah. we'll put it in our december um newsletter um i don't know if we can get it out this month but maybe Perfect. i have to i have to ask hannah <laughs> see she's on the live so anyway thank you so much jessiana um this has been a, a wealth of information um i want you to enjoy your holidays and uh, we'll definitely be talking to you next year thank you so much and for everyone that joined us uh remember we have these lives all of the time we have instagram and we're also on facebook so please join us uh we welcome you thank you be safe and enjoy the rest thank of your day bye-bye